Pastor Daniel Yao Enchi is the lead pastor of the Faith Life Church and is responsible for the vision, values, and culture of our church. He brings practical teaching with simple keys to living the maximized extraordinary Christian life by making the Bible real and applicable to our everyday life. He shares on topics that are relevant to people of all races, ages, and genders. Pastor Daniel has a passion to add value to others out of the experience from his own Christian journey. His personal mission is to inspire faith, ignite hope, and break through barriers through preaching and the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, with a round of applause and a standing ovation, let's welcome our founding pastor, Pastor Daniel Yao Enchi. This morning, I want to speak on love for God. Praise the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number 5. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. So he begins by saying you must love the Lord your God with all your what? Your heart. With all your soul. And with all your might. And he says don't just do it. But be an example to your children. You see it's important for you to understand. That our, our level of love for God. Is what defines the limits of our destiny in the kingdom. You know most of the time. We are very emotional. About everything we do. You come to church, the pastor is preaching. You think the pastor is preaching about you. Why is pastor using my example? Why is this? Uh, uh, uh. You see, when you love God, there are some things it, 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 will, it, will, it will not bother you. Do you think that I love, that I come and stand, all the bad I've done in this life, you know. My love for God constrains me to tell you the honest truth to help you to also grow in the things of God. You see, your love for God is, is what determines the limits of your life. There are many of us, we struggle with peace because we don't even love God. When you love God, you know that God does not want you to hold on to unforgiveness. And so because of your love for God, no matter who has wronged you, you let it go so that you have peace. And then you can love God. Exodus chapter 20 verse 6. Let's start from verse 5 so that you understand the context. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. No, serve them. Talking about other images, other gods. Every other thing that competes for worship. God says, when it comes to you, my child, who I want to come into a covenant walk with you, he said that don't serve them. He says, for I, the Lord thy God, I am a jealous God. So God tells us, guess what? I'm like Pastor Daniel. I am jealous. When I pray for you, my whole heart is with you. When I see you gallivanting, I would, de I would disconnect my heart from you. Because if I'm in, it's 100%. If I am out, it's 100%. There's no gray area inside the middle. And God is like me because I was created in his image and likeness. He says, I am a jealous God. See, he says, you cannot compete with other things for my love. And that is why God healed your daughter. Because that was the day you chose God. Over your own biology. Can you imagine a mother who is a doctor, medical doctor? The child is extremely sick, complicated malaria, with IV on the child. Leaves the child to go after souls for God. Abba. What you have done, you have provoked God to let God know if you don't show up, I will not show up. I am going after what you love so that you can love what I love. And she goes. And, and we say so. And goes back home to find out that the child is, oh, the child is recovering. And if the child is recovering, you rationalize that at least Makokakra. She says, I have to clean God's house. God, <laughs> I'm going, you know, I'm going. And she leaves the child. Now God now has to send angels to come and check the situation because this lady is a mad woman. If we don't heal this, this lady's child now, she will leave the child on Sunday. And Sunday is not an excuse. So go, check the HB level. It's 9. Move it to normal level, 12. Overnight. Heal the child's body. You see, 
Sister, there are secrets of life. And when you discover it, everything in your life will change. Listen, there are things we do to produce results. And the first thing you do, they ask Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? In other words, of all the instructions within the law and the prophets, all that the prophets have written, which one is the greatest of command? Which one has God's attention? He says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Jesus quoted it. In other words, what changes levels and commands for men, what gives you an unfair advantage in life, what, 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 what puts you on a level that you cannot be limited or hindered, is your love for God. There is no way I can love Lady Irene more than God. God forbid, it will never happen. Or Berima. No, those two people, in my heart, God knows. They are already on the water. They have, they've been sacrificed though. Me, I have no family in this life. I only have God. Because I have God, you are connected to me. The day you hear that Pastor Dan has, God forbid, gone to smooch some girl. So, he, mm, he, I said this, so that's awful way, man. <laughs> when they start having salt and pepper beard, they start going after their girls. God forbid. You all leave me. God forbid, though. But one day, I can behave in a way, the Diary say, ah, ah, too much of you, I can't marry you again. Go. She will leave me, won't she? One day, Berima will leave me and say he has fallen in love with a woman. He's going. So why should I love people who can leave me? More than my God. Who said I will never leave you nor forsake you. Everybody can leave you. But your love of God is the only one who will never leave you nor forsake you. I am not saying don't love people. But I'm saying you cannot love human beings more than God. Because no matter who they are, they can easily forsake you. This is the reality of life, oh sister. Everybody can leave you. But the only one who has covenanted never to leave you is God Almighty. Somebody say, God, I love you. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9. He says, know therefore that the Lord your God, he is God. The faithful God who keeps his covenant and his loving kindness to a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. So sister, love God. Keep his commandments. Brother, love God. Keep his commandment. He says God keeps... See, he says God says when you come into a covenant of love with me, 1,000 years, I remember I'm in covenant. I don't forget. And you live for 1,000 years? No. What it means is that love, it transcends to your children. Your love for God will cause God to come into a covenant with your children. It is not everybody that struggles in this life. Oh. Say, oh, so be an ebra, as I see, so who here, moi? Mama, how old is Elon Max? Look, the guy has money. See, if every day he spends one million, till the day he dies, he can't finish eating his money. If he eats one million every day, at the end of the year, do you know how much money he would have eaten? 365 million. A billion is a million million. The guy has over 300 of a million million. <laughs> if he spends one million every day, for one year it will be 365 million. How many days, how many years will he need to be able to, to finish a million's million? Not started a bang. Do you know everything that boy has touched is become blessed? He touched PayPal, he went global. Whatever he touched, it, it goes global. I want to ask you a question. You know. At the time he was doing PayPal, how old was he? Now, I don't know. Not And then one of the shame. You don't know somebody's covenant he has with God. Maybe go and check his generations. You will find out who his grandfather or great grandfather was and whether he was a server of God or not. You see, we live our life and uh, he's not a Christian. So, and you hear pastors. Preach rubbish, pastors. So they preach rubbish. You know, most successful people are not Christians. We have two lights in this life. There's light and there's darkness. So everybody chose one. If you chose a demonic spirit, the God of this world, you will give them money. If you choose Christianity, he will give you money. There are see, there's the power of God and the principles of God. There's the power of God and the principles of God. There are some things if you live by, it's guaranteed. 
When you don't forgive people, you will have high blood pressure. It's guaranteed. Whether you're a Christian or non-Christian, if you hold on to bitterness, resentment, pain, brother, I can guarantee with my eyes open. Recently, I was speaking to a woman who came to see me. Pastor Dan, who do you cry for? Mom, Paya, mommy. You made me laugh. Ah. He said, eh, eh, Matiashi two times. So for, I was so bomb, Paya, mommy. And I'm saying, Mama, where are you? Mama, where are they? And I said, Mama, when you, you exercise, bodily exercise profit little. You exercise, Kakra. Also, what do you have? Oh, Mom, Paya, mommy. Oh, Mom, Paya, mommy. Oh, oh. And I'm saying, Mama, who do you tell me? Send me your back. I said, I so my mother quite exercise. So I was speaking to the woman about husband. She says, mm, man, baby, I'm ready. I feel like I'm going to see no man. I'm saying, Mama, you ain't see no man. Open for house help. So this woman goes for a walk for two days. I was saying, my friend, Pastor, Pastor, she said, I'm meeting with Pastor, I'm going to do something. So I'm going to pay a crony with my man. You see, brothers and sisters, there are things that we must do, there are things that God will do. And one of the things God wants, us to do is to first love him absolutely. Can you imagine you go to God and say, My love? You are calling God my love. Do you know how God is? Me ni pampo, so be friendly my pastor pa me feel it. Now be catchonya me say, My father, my God. And you say it from your heart. It's a heart to heart connection between you and God. And most of the time, when we don't say it, when we don't love God, He can't go beyond Himself to do things for us. You see, it is important to note that although breakthrough is defined by faith, our faith will only deliver to the level of our love for God. Do you love God? Why are you asking God to give you an open door? Why are you asking God to give you a child? Why are you asking God for advancement? Why are you asking God for promotion? Is it because you want to use the promotion to advance his cause? Or so that you will prove a point to people? Look at most prayer meetings. We want to prove a point. God do it for them so that they will also know. That's why God will not do it. He does it that it will bring glory to his name. Mama. I know what to use money for. But you see me give all my money to God. I'm serving God with my life, my strength. I will show you how the money I was going to use to build my house. I put everything for our 31st. And every year I do it too. And yet every year the house goes better than where it was. Can you imagine, sister, that I didn't have money for electrician. So I was wondering, what do I do? But it was time for me to bring an electrician to come and do electrical works. So I, I asked somebody, can you send me somebody who did yours for you? The person comes. And when the guy got there, he greeted and said, Ah, Pacho, I'm not suffering. Say, yes, so you're suffering. I'm saying, Pacho, but I'm sure that you're correct, sir. I say, Ah, so you're suffering. I'm going to your money free. Mama, what you be that? Who wires an entire house for free? And I'm so, but so for you, you be any correct, oh, eh, be a meme, you correct, oh. I say, I no cry, anti cry, no me, no. Yes, so yes, so for, na se me ye juma na ma wa nyami be shirame. Does it make sense? So this guy does the work. In three weeks or a month, papa, e do bosu me cry. In three weeks, somebody called him and gave him three buildings. The guy said, I know that this is a mission house. So I'm working for God. I don't have to take money. He got three buildings to do plus air conditions. in The carpenter working in my house. Carpenter. Says, Oh, the way I'm going to do it. So for the opposite, the chairman will be a minty mint charge. All of a sudden, God starts opening the door for You see, when you love God, eh, it becomes contagious. Everybody that connects with you starts connecting to it. I pray for somebody in this service that you will begin to love God. I pray for somebody that everything concerning your life, you will connect it to God and your love for God. You will choose God above every other thing and God will take care of the rest. Matthew 6 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all other things that many people are looking for. It shall be added unto you. Someone say, Lord, add it to me. Hallelujah. Let's go. Let's go. Have I quoted Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12? 
He says, now Israel, what does the Lord your God require from you? But to fear the Lord your God, number one, to walk in all his ways and love him and serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You see, God wants us to love him. God wants us to serve him with all our... Are you serving God with all your heart? Are you serving God? I come to church sometimes, the whole place is dirty and human beings have come here and gone. I come to church, everything is not covered. And I'm wondering, ah, how are people serving God? People work in church, office, and it's as, as like you are begging them to serve God. People work for God and they add money to it. Why? How do you, how do you love God like this? Why? How do you love God How do you How do you love God like this? You are serving, you've been in this church. We preach you every month, every day. You don't even want to do anything for God. Even the doctor is cleaning the floor. You, you poor man. You don't want to do anything for God because you are too big. That's why you are poor. If you will change your mind, your level will change financially. See, you are not working for me. Me. I am a nobody. Please let me let me be honest with you. I am I am just I am a non-entity, but God just showed me mercy. That's why I'm standing here. I'm just standing here just by the by the sure mercies and grace of God. I don't want to be see what is my qualification? Who am I? Who am I? See how, how noble people like you are sitting here. You are more intelligent than me. You, you know how to manage things more than me. You are here because my love for God has made God place something on me that works for you. So why don't you love God? So that God will do more for you than he's even doing for me. Is it, is it, what I'm saying, is it, is it a good thing? I'm not saying me All I do is I just love God. Mama, and you arithmetical. And your algebra. It's not a complicated malaria. Love God. With everything in you, love God. Just, love, your age notwithstanding, love God. You don't have to be in a department to love God. Just love God. Ah! Do you know I used to go and sweep in lighthouse? I go and pray at the park. When I'm going, there was one guy who was sweeping the church. I said, hey, this is a great opportunity. Mama, no my cup prayer be. No my cup prayer. My mother used to sweep in church. No wonder we are we, we we contacted grace because as she's sweeping, she's sweeping grace for us. You left all the grace. Most of the time, we leave the grace that we contact in church on the floor and go, I love God. Someone say, I will love God. Someone say, I will love God. You see, <laughs> Ajay, Ajay, Ajay. You see, to maximize the blessing of my love for God, we must engage spiritually romans chapter 8 verse number 6 for to be carnally minded is dead but to be spiritually minded is life and peace i must engage spiritually look at the guy you see the guy is focused look at how he's bent down and his focus is spiritually my love for God, I disconnect from the natural. I'm not looking at my natural proclivities to make decisions. My decision is based on my love for God. So when I'm, I, I am with a lady alone in my office, in my bedroom, in a hotel room, give me, give me, give me some places you meet the girls alone. In the restaurant, eh? In the nightclub. I must understand that this thing that I am in, God is also here. And so my love is not just physical. It's a spiritual engagement I am with God. And when nobody will see me, God is there. And so my love for God, I am, I am connected spiritually to a degree that I cannot sin against him. Although nobody is there. I'm feeling the feeling. But I'm engaged spiritually. Mama. Yes, sir. Who be the bunny on? But remember, you are what engage what spiritually. It's my love for God. Meaning, nyame, nyame oho. Nobody sees me. Nyame oho. 
Hey. Oh, when I went past her, didn't say, let me tell you some, something, some, some, something I heard. Some lady slept with somebody and got pregnant and they were talking about it with her. She said, oh, please forget about the prophets. I heard the voice note. Forget about the prophet. If they are really prophets, why none of them saw that I was pregnant? When I heard that, I said, eh, okay, she will lose the baby. What do you mean? That, you see, we are supposed to cover you from, 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 you see, the church is not a place where we, we dishonor people. When you go to mess up, so I come and, so when I say it in public, everybody say, ah, oh, dear, she, what will I get from it? Sometimes I'll pretend like I've not even seen. Because what I need is that your soul will be saved. It's not to prove a point that I can see. Who do you mean? But it's not important. Your work with God is more important. Ah, you're going to sleep with somebody's husband. You got him pregnant. You are dishonoring men of God. That baby cannot be a baby. It will dissolve. You see, people have played games with this Christianity. Ah, that now it looks like everything is normal. See, it's not normal like that, oh. So, somebody say engage spiritually. You see, to maximize the blessing of my love for God, I must engage willingly. Someone say willingly. First Corinthians chapter 9 verse 17. I must engage willingly. I must engage what? Willingly. He said, for if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. When I love God willingly, I have a reward. When I make decisions based on my love for God willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me, he says, if it is against my will, I'd like you to know that a dispensation of the gospel, I am not alone. That's why Bishop Oedipo said, the gospel of my testimony. Mama, Abrabona Bona Nyaun Kwao, a man for Shebre is connected to you. People's destinies are connected. That's why you must love God willingly and be an example. Number three, I must. Engage God heartily, heartily, heartily. Colossians chapter 3, verse 22 and 24. Colossians chapter 3, verse 22 and 24. He says, Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleases, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. Verse 24. Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. Mama, listen to me. He said, for you serve the Lord Christ. So, brother, sister, when you are serving somebody, do it as unto God. Your boss may not appreciate you, but do it because of your love for God. And he says that you must know that God is the one who will pay you. You don't know. Come and sing here. Yeah, you don't want to sing. You behave like somebody I know. She will sing two minutes, then she will <laughs> already. That could make two bob of you. He sings morning. You know what to know. Now, the fashion show in Yabana. Now, also, what you are now, what we are wine now, also, what you are. You're so focused on self that you don't lose yourself for the Holy Spirit to flow. When we say worship God now, you know, okay, so people worship. When we say come and give a testimony now, okay. Who will go first? Who is serious? Who is serious? When you say, give to God. So for no, no. I'm going to start to say, I'm going 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 to say, I just wish the thing in my heart that God should change it. God raise the level. Could it be that the reason why you are still struggling is because your love for God is questionable? Then you love God faithfully, faithfully. First Corinthians 4, 1 to 2. First Corinthians 1, love the Lord faithfully. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mystery of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. When you say you love God, understand that you are a steward. There are many of us in this church, we have stopped paying tight. You get bonus from office, that one you don't tight. You get pay raise, you don't tight. You get per diem, you don't tight. You are keeping it. In meanwhile, you are not the only person with a beautiful face in the office. But they chose you to go. Because God 
thought you would be faithful. And now those doors are not opening and you are praying. Who are you praying to? God? The one you cheated? You have been struggling financially. Yeah, God opened a door for you. Once the money came, he said the money came in trickles. Into, that's why he couldn't pay your tithe. Now you are wondering why God is not bringing again. We must love God faithfully or else we are not doing our part of the covenant. And so God will not do his part of the covenant. You're a married woman. You must love your husband faithfully. Whether he behaves well or not, you are in covenant with God in that relationship. Because three people joined that relationship. It was you, your husband, and God. And so when you remain faithful to God based on your covenant you have, for which he was a witness, God knows how to protect, preserve, and honor you. I tell people, listen, your partner may misbehave, but do your part. Honor God! And watch God change your level. See, I don't preach sermons in abstract to make you happy. My sermon, they don't make you happy. They are instructions for righteousness. See, to maximize the blessing of my love for God, I must love God joyfully. I must love God hot. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 47. It's not under duress. Love God joyfully. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness. Are you seeing it? You see in the Bible? He said, we are not serving God. Uh, it's like duress. Come to church. Mm, your wife has to beg you. Uh, oh, Joe. Joe, let's go to church. Go, Joe, you, you go. When we come back, I'll cook, I'll, I'll cook a cheque for you. And then because of that cheque. <laughs> Love God joyfully. It has to be joyful to go to church. He has to be joyful to love God. He has to be joyful to serve in church. See, please, when you are serving God, serve God joyfully. Dance before God joyfully. You don't have to have anything. Just, just, just dance. Just be joyful. I have money. I don't have money. I command my legs to praise the Lord. It's not every day we all have money. See, God wants us to love him joyfully. It's not, it's not the money in your pocket. Whether you have or you don't have, it's, it does not matter. Just love God joyfully. You come to church, when you are just there, hey, it's only me, God doesn't love. Yes, be, it, the joy is because there's no joy, God will not love you. Do you know that joy is contagious? If you like when you, you are walking on the roadside and you are just smiling, people will start watching you. When you look at somebody and you smile and you bow, they, they will also smile back. Then after, after they've done it, then they will wonder, ah, okay, do I know her or she knows me? Joy is contagious. God says, we must love him joyfully. Someone say, I will love God joyfully. So I must love God diligently. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 29. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 29. He says, seest thou a man diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before me. Amen. Give me the picture of diligence. You give it your 100% focus. You are fully engaged. You are diligent about your love for God. Are you diligent? When they commit something to you in the house of God, are you diligent? Are you diligent? Charlie, no, are they mean to me yet? You, your children will pick after you. Love God sacrificially. Sacri what? Sacri what? <laughs> Psalm 126 verse 1 to 6. Psalm 126. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. And our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen. The Lord has done great things for them. Next verse. The Lord has done great things for us. Whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Look at, look at, look at, look at, look at ungrateful people. When God turned the captivity and people were saying God has done great things, they were focused on the problem. Ah, is, let's start from the beginning. Verse 1. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them. That dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the hidden, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. They, they are now acknowledged. See, it was the hidden that first saw what God had done. Most of the time, when God starts doing things for us, we are so fixated on our problem that we don't see what God is doing. And when people are even telling us, yes, we say the first part, oh, yes, God has done it. The next thing, we jump back to the problem. We are so fixed in the problem, we don't want to pause and thank God. There are many of us, we are very unthankful. Unthankful. 
and thankful. But we must love God sacrificially. We must love him. Stop focusing on your problem and love God. Stop focusing on what you have not yet received and love God. Stop focusing on what you don't have and love God. Stop focusing on what has not yet happened. Focus on the things God has done and love God. I heard the story of a woman who they had cut both fallopian tubes. She had two ectopic pregnancies. Both fallopian tubes were cut. There was no way she can get pregnant. So she decided to love God. Sacrificially. So she will come and serve God. As may imagine there, may me She will win souls, clean the church. One day, my, my, my father in the Lord, Bishop Bernardo Jasari, called the lady and said, God said, a year by this time, according to the time of life, you will conceive. The woman didn't say anything, no. She said, Amen. And left. Two days later, she and the husband came back to the pastor and said, Pastor, when you were giving the prophecy, there was a part you did not know. Is that I don't have fallopian tubes. I've, I've lost babies every time I get pregnant. I've had two ectopic pregnancies. They've cut both fallopian tubes. So Bishop said, you were sitting there wondering, hey, how did I give this prophecy? Uh, then he said, well, thank God I didn't know because I wouldn't have prophesied. But because I prophesied, God will honor his word. Continue doing what you do. The following man, the woman conceived. How the conception came, go and ask God. Even the doctor, there's a documentary on it. The doctor even testified. That I was the one who did the second surgery. There is nothing God cannot do for a man or a woman who loves God. I'm repeating my statement. There is nothing that God cannot do for a man or a woman who, who loves God. There is nothing. See, the Bible says, the Lord God is a son and a shield. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk upright. When he says he will, he will, he will give you honor. And favor when you love God, He will honor you. You see, this is my daughter who is my accountant. She and the husband had gotten married. I knew she wanted a child. One day I was there. She came. The church they needed a counting machine. Counting machine. My daughter went to buy a counting machine for God. I went to God and reminded God because she has bought you a counting machine, she must begin to count her babies. That's why you got pregnant. Your pregnancy was based on the counting machine you bought. I told God, ah, she has done this, so let her count her babies. Remember her and show her mercy. That she has brought you a count. The church should have bought it. She said, no, Papa, I'll buy it myself. I said, no, let me buy it. She said, no, 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 no. I want a blessing. I know what I'm doing. Me too, I knew what she was doing. So me too, I knew. What does she want? He said, baby. God did not say, I knew what she wanted because she had done what God needed. You see, your expectation is what becomes your experience. Your expectation is what becomes your experience. When your expectation is, as I love God, God will love me back and honor me. God will do it. Do you know the scripture says in the book of Revelations, he said, I stand at the door and knock. If any man would open me, I will come in and dine with them. So when you open your heart to love God, God comes to dwell with you and begin to eat with you. Can you imagine God is having dinner with you? He did not say you will cook the food. Though. He said we will come in and dine. So we will come in with food. Think about it. Mama, can you imagine saying, mm. Can you eat? When God himself visits you, it's like me visiting your house. If I'm visiting your house, I have to come with money. So when am I coming? You have not invited me. That's why I have not come. Expectation is what becomes your experience. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 32 to 33. Therefore you shall be careful to do as the Lord your God has commanded you. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. You shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God has commanded you. That you may live, number one. And that it may be well with you, number two. And that you may prolong your days, number three. Which you shall possess. When I love God, it will, number one, be well with me. Number two, I will live. Number three, I will prolong my own days. Stand to your feet. There's a guy by name Matt Gates. Donald Trump called him to be the attorney general. Now he can't because there's some one sexual scandal here, one sexual scandal there. Another one, something, something, Hexef. Nice guy, good looking. 
opportunity for him to be, I think, secretary of state or something. He too. One day he went to drink alcohol and they said that he slept with a woman. He says it's a consensual sex with a married woman. Just 2017. And now they are wondering whether he will even pass. Matt Gates has even resigned. You see, when God gives us scriptures and covenants and principles, it is not for him all. It is for your, to secure your own future. If you live your life anyhow, you will not secure your own future. I'd like you to close your eyes and pray. And say, God, I will love you and do what you have said. I will love you and do what you have said. So somebody pray. Just, just pray. From this day, I behave properly. God, from this day, I'll begin to love you. Everybody pray. I will love you. I will love what you love. I will desire what you desire. I will love what you love. Deuteronomy 11 verse 1, You shall therefore love the Lord your God and always keep his charge, his statutes, his ordinances, his commandments. That guy lost a great opportunity to be Attorney General of the United States of America. One, his is now in question. Because he slept with somebody else's wife. You see, there are some sins when you sin, you sin against your own self. Pray and say, God, where I've gotten it wrong, forgive me. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. God, where I got it wrong, please forgive me. Where I got it wrong, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Somebody pray now. Say, Lord, I will be diligent. God, I will love you spiritually I will love you I will love you joyfully I will love you diligently I will love you sacrificially God help me I will love you in the name of Jesus you are here you, you used to be on fire for God you used to love God and now you are wondering whether to whether if Jesus comes, you will go with him. You are here. You want to give your life one more time to God. You want to rededicate your life to love God diligently. Love God expectantly. Love God. You just want to pray right now. Pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I am so sorry for all that I've done against you. From this day, forgive me of all my sins help me to be a Christian help me to love you 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 willingly help me to love you heartily help me to love you faithfully Help me to love you diligently. Help me to love you sacrificially. Help me to love you, oh God. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Thank you that my sins are forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. There's one last one I forgot. You must learn to love God expectantly expect write it down before we close you must love god expectantly first corinthians chapter 9 verse 10 to 14 expectantly was expectantly love god expectantly first corinthians chapter 9 verse 10 to 14 say it he it all together for our six for our sakes, no doubt, this is written. That he that ploweth should plow in hope. And that he that treasured in hope should be a partaker of his hope. He says, when I'm plowing, I must plow in hope. When I'm sowing a seed in church, I sow in hope. When I'm serving in church, I serve in hope. When, when I'm doing anything for God, I do it expectant. When I love God, I know my Redeemer liveth. He says, if we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather 
Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Next verse. It says, Do you not know that they which minister about holy things live of the holy things of the temple? And they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar. Listen to me, everybody. Listen to me. When you serve, when you serve, when you connect to the altar, the altar will feed you. Amen. When you connect to the altar, the altar will feed you. When you serve faithfully, God will open the door for you. Yeah. Yeah. Serve God expectantly. Connect your soul. Connect your destiny to this altar. And say, God, as I serve you, God, shift my life and change my story. That should be your prayers. Are you with me? See, I live a holy life because if I misbehave, it will affect you. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you two, do the best you can. Connect. And let's believe God together for you. Is it a good thing? Put your hands together for Jesus.